You know, Isaiah never saw the Lord in his lifetime. Think about this. Never saw him with his eyes. But you know, he patiently waited with anticipation. He was anticipating. He was excited because he trusted God. The people of Israel, many of them were excited. And, and when, they heard, when they heard of the birth of Jesus, they were excited. Now, there were those that said, what? How can this be? Mary, when the angel came to her, how can this be? I, wait, I'm just a little girl. I'm just a young girl. I've never been with a man. How can I deliver any babies? Much less can I deliver the Savior of the world. You see, for Isaiah, Jesus would be hope to the nation of Israel. For us, on this side of the cross, he, Jesus, say the name. Jesus. Jesus. He is the hope not only for Israel, but for all who would receive salvation and forgiveness. So if we were to be lighting candles, and, and traditionally that's what many do, the first candle of the Advent is the candle of hope. Hope is something that's gained by putting your trust in something. Hope is lost when you put your trust in something that has failed or you have lost faith that it will even happen. Even though Isaiah never saw this Redeemer come, he never lost faith in the hope that he was coming. It was a promise that he lived, breathed, and he died. Notice what I'm saying. That was the promise that kept him going. That was the thing that, that stoked the fires of his life. You might remember the prophet that talked about the gospel, the, the preaching, the how, was, how he had to share the word of God because it was like fire shut up in his bones. You know, the fact does not change because he did not see the Messiah with his eyes. It just was not in his timing. It was in God's timing. But he still believed. Having not received the promise, yet he still believed. You know, we have all kinds of proof that Jesus lived, that Jesus died, that Jesus was resurrected. At his resurrection, he promised to come back. And not only did he promise to come back, he said, I'm going to come back and I'm going to receive those that have put their faith in the Redeemer. And who's that Redeemer? So here, here we are, over 2,000 years into the future, 2,000 years after his birth, and we're still waiting for our Redeemer to return. Amen. Amen? You know, they waited for Jesus just to show up, just to come, just to be there, just to manifest. The promise of the Redeemer has been fulfilled. It was fulfilled in that baby in the manger. The power of the Holy Spirit it is, is to lead us and to guide us as his people to that Redeemer. Nobody comes to Jesus except the Spirit to draw them. And nobody gets to God except through Jesus. Amen? Yeah. You know, the difference is that we do not have to wonder if the Redeemer will do what he has promised. We need to figure out, however, how we're going to live, and we need to wait with anticipation. Wait, be, listen, with expectancy and with dedication and with obedience so that we are ready when the Redeemer does come. You can't wait till the last minute. You won't even know how to act. Some of us, we still today don't know how to act in church. You've been in church your whole life and you still don't know how to conduct yourself. There are things that should go on at different times and places, but we all think, that, oh, I got something that came to my mind. I need to go interrupt whatever's going on. <laughs> Can I tell you, there's enough interruptions in life when we have an opportunity to be able to order our lives. For instance, there was a, I'll say he was a friend, although I haven't seen him all this year. 
I know that he I know that he believed in Jesus. I don't know what his worship practice was or anything like that. But he went home to be with the Lord this last week. People just, oh, was it Corona? Was it doesn't matter. He went home to be with the Lord. Nothing else matters. He went home to be with the Lord. He was 80, I think he was 86 years old. You know, he doesn't have to wait any longer to see that promise. To see the promise of God fulfilled and to be absent from the body is to be what? I mean, right now he is rejoicing with God Almighty. Absent from this body, absent from this world to be present with the Lord. That is a promise for a believer. That's good news. Amen. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 says this. May the hope, listen, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope. Amen. Now wait a minute now. That you may overflow with hope. Not just in what you believe. Not just in what you will to take place. Not just by what you want to make place. But it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to get to a place, church, where we can recognize the power of that Spirit in our lives and submit ourselves to it. Amen? I mean, here's the thing. Because you can have hope in many things. We can hope in institutions. We can hope in politicians. We can hope in organizations. You can place all your hope into that and you'll come up empty. But I promise you this. If you place your hope in God, it never disappoints. Amen. You see, godly hopes brings more hope. I don't think you heard that. Godly hope brings more hope. Hope. Amen. Godly hope is not wishy washy. Godly hope is not all just full of emotion and, and, and erratic and sporadic. No, it, it's, no, godly hope is not wishy washy. Godly hope is certainty in God doing what He said that He would do. Has God done anything for you in your life? 2,000 years ago, he shows up in a manger. 30 plus years after that, he shows up on the cross. He leaves the cross, disappears for a while, just for a few days. They go to find him in the tomb. He's gone. Can you imagine looking in the tomb and him not being there? They were so distraught by the fact that they were at this point thinking that perhaps maybe they had lost their faith or lost their hope. They were so distraught in the darkness of what they experienced that as these two people, as, as these people were walking along, a man shows up with them. They supposed that he was a gardener. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm telling you right now? They, sometimes things happen in our life and we lose perspective. He is who he said he was. He is who he said he is. Amen. He will do what he said he will do. Amen. Godly hope is a certainty that God is going to do what he said he would do in preparation and anticipation. Sometimes are hard to live by. You know, there are some who prepare well and, and are ready they seem to have everything organized. I don't know who they are, but uh, <laughs> everything at their, at their fingertips. You know anybody that seems to have everything in order? Then there are those who are procrastinators. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> there are pro those who are procrastinators. They have every intention of doing whatever needs to be done. But it never seems to be the right time. Amen. You know, preparation can turn to a form of laziness as well. Because when time has gone by, 
we, we begin to lose 